you all for being here. I'm super excited to be here uh, because, especially because six years ago, I came to this first to this conference for the first time as a grad student. Uh, during as a first year student, I was really inspired by the speakers and the people that were involved in this conference. So I sort of stayed on. Uh, one of those people was Evan. Evan at the time was the president of IFC and Sundance TV. And in the six years since we've met, he's created Pivot TV, founded CISO, is now producing or executive producing multiple TV projects and film projects, comedy specials, podcasts, you name it. Um, there are people that don't have a full-time career doing all of those things, and he's done that just in six years since we've known each other. So he's an educator uh, at heart, he's a friend, he's a very good mentor, so please welcome Evan Shapiro. Can you all hear me? Yes. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Try again. Hello, everyone. Hi. Awesome, awesome. So let me take a quick uh, survey. Who here is undergrad? Who here is grad? Who here has a job? Um, and, um, okay, great. So I'm done. Um, <laughs> So th this is, uh, and I'm going to do a speed version of this, and there's actually a workbook that we can email to you. So if you uh, reach out, uh, th th there's a companion workbook that you can actually work through a lot of what I'm going to talk to on your own. Um, but there's also some really good books that I'll talk about at the end that you can use to guide yourself through a lot of what I'm going to talk about as well. Um, the, 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 the number of human beings I have conversations with on an ongoing basis who are casting about for what they want to do, casting about for their next thing, um, and or have reached a plateau in their career that they're not sure how to get past, um, is greater than it should be. And oftentimes it's people you know, just starting their careers who are in college. Other times it's people who are in grad school and they're not sure what to do with that degree. And then you'd be surprised. There are a ton of people who are my age, which is 28, and <laughs> why is that funny? You look very like a very handsome 28 year old. Thank you. Um, so, but no, there are people in their their 30s, their 40s, people who get vice president's titles, people who get executive vice president titles, who find themselves at a plateau or a, a, a sticking point or hitting a ceiling in their career, and inevitably the conversation turns to what should I do next? Um, how do I pivot? Um, and I have made a professional career pivoting. Uh, I started, in, I dropped out of college, moved to New York to write direct. I started in nonprofit dance, not as a dancer. Uh, again, not funny. Um, the, uh, and then moved into theater, uh, and then into marketing and then into television, and then into digital, and now I'm an independent producer. Um, and um, in each case, um, I was not so much pivoting to find the next stage of my career as I was trying to create an environment for myself where I could do what I do best every single day. And so the secret to having a career that is both fulfilling, rewarding, productive, and never ending is to figure out what you do best and do that every day. If you can do that, you'll never be wanting for work. The challenge is figuring that all out because um, it is not always self-evident. So this is a, a, a bit of an exercise, a bit some advice, and then some hard tactics um, that I can give you that can help you if you're starting out your career, right? Embark on that career with some foresight, some kind of planning some in intentionality. Um, but then also, on the, fifth, on the flip side, if you're in your career and you're looking for that next step, a way to kind of figure out how to get into that next step, but put yourself on a track to continually have great work to do. Does that sound useful to you? Great. Um, so I, I like to use a Venn diagram in every conversation that I'm having, just because, why not? Um, and this is a Venn diagram that I actually stole from a book called Good to Great, um, which is a great business book by Jim Collins, uh, very 
late last century. Um, it's a bit dated now because some of the companies that he said went from good to great are no longer in existence. Um, <laughs> some have ceased being great, but there are some innate lessons in there. And the one thing that he found out doing, uh, uh, does anybody know who Jim Collins is? So he, uh, he um, actually, by the way, remind me, I have some info for you. Um, so uh, what he did was he did a bunch of case studies between two companies. So he took um, Walgreens and Ecker. Um, he took Zenith and Sony. He took Hewlett Packard and I can't remember the companion company. And he tried to figure out why one company got great and the other went mad. And inevitably, this exercise was the one unifying factor of all the companies that went from good to great. Um, so, and I now apply it to individuals. So life, careers, business in general, basically breaks down into three innate circles. The first is um, what you can be best in the world at. Not good, not great, and maybe not today, but what if you apply yourself every day for the rest of your life, you have the potential to be best in the world at. The second circle is your economic transaction. What is your thing that you're bottling and selling? For me, that is profit per idea. Profit per idea. I come up with an idea, I try to wring as much money out of it as I possibly can, and then I move on. Some ideas produce nothing. Some ideas are incredibly profitable, and the average is a portfolio that you can live with. So you, you can't have a business, you can't have a career if you can't earn money. You gotta pay the bills, right? Unless you're Donald Trump. And um, the last circle is the thing that you would wake up and do every day even if you didn't get paid for it, your passion. Um, the thing that just is innately just makes you joyous and happy, even if it's not profitable. Um, for me, Anyone that, you're not good at um, it, it it's, it's something that you're passionate about. Um, and if you can figure out all three of these circles, and then, so this is best in the world, this is economic unit, so Walgreens is profit per square inch, per, uh, per square foot, um, and the last is uh, passion, what you would get up and do even if you couldn't. And if you can figure out what this is, and do only that, you will go from good to great, and, you, and your success will be self-propelled. Um, so these things are not easy to figure out. You will not figure out them in this session. You will not figure them out next week. You will not figure them out next year. These are things that you start and you journey towards, um, and you don't give up until you think you've tried to figure them out. But if you can, and Collins calls this a hedgehog concept, um, because the hedgehog does one thing very well where the fox does a lot of things in. That's a Aesop's fable. Um, and if you can, and if you can make your life all about these three things all the time, you become self-propelled. Now again, you're not going to answer these things today, but if you take today as the first step in a journey towards answering this question, and you wake up every day stupid and looking for the answers to these questions, that journey will take you through um, the path to where you want to be um, successfully down the line. So these also can break down into kind of rudimentary things. So this would be talent, okay? This would be skill, and this would be passion. So these are still the things that make your heart race. Um, talents, I, I, I'm going to say something a little controversial. Talents are unteachable. They are innate. You cannot teach talent. Skills are things you pick up, things you can learn, things that can be taught. And passions are the things that just kind of course through your veins. Um, again, you may not be great at them. I love baseball. I am not good at baseball. Um, so when you combine all these things together, then you find who you are as a person in the world and as a person, um, a person in, uh, in, in business as well. So the first key thing in, in to 
figuring these things out is self-assessment, self-awareness. You have to know who you are. You have to be honest with yourself. Um, and that's not an, always an easy thing to do. Is anybody here, uh, I think, uh, was anybody here at the Bucus session? So, um, you know, this is a guy who is innately um, humble, despite the fact that he's one of the most powerful people in the media industry, really humble, humble uh, person. He is incredibly self-aware, and I think that came across in his session. Um, if you ever had a boss who is not self-aware, it's torturous, right? Um, you, if someone's not aware of who they are, and they, and they enter a room, um, it can be a kind of very painful to watch happen. So the first thing is to do um, is to understand what your talents are and what they're not. And one of the things that America does a disservice to, I'm gonna take this jacket off for a second. Um, one of the things that America does at the school level and in business is they try to fix you. So they try to make you better. Um, so a student comes, to, tell me if this ever happened to you. A student comes home from uh, school with a report card or whatever, uh, uh, you know, report card, and they get a D in math and an A in English. And in my generation, I think maybe a little less so in your generation, but inevitably, if you have parents who are stressing type A personalities, they say, well, the A in English is great, but you gotta fix the math. And in business, it looks like, you know, could you, if you could just, you know, you're great, super over here. But if you could just do, if this could be a little, and we could, and you'll get that, and it's a, it's a carrot stick type of thing. But inevitably, that's not the way things should go. We should be focusing on people's talents. We should be furthering their talents. We should be special, to helping people encouraged to specialize in their talents to the point where their weaknesses become irrelevant. I don't have to do math on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not part of my gig. And that's good, because I'm shitty at it. And by the way, every iPhone has a calculator. So. <laughs> Point is, you, you, can't, you can't build your life entirely around only the things that you're good at. Obviously, everybody has to pay their taxes, everybody has to do the shitty stuff that they don't want to do. But you can focus on the good stuff to the point where the bad stuff becomes irrelevant. Now, you also have to be self-aware about what's, what's bad about you. You have to know your weaknesses so you can protect yourself from them. I tend to be egotistical, I tend to talk too much, I tend to shoot from the hip. Um, these are things I'm aware of, um, so I watch myself on that. But I also love to talk in front of people, it's something I enjoy, so I give myself those opportunities when I can. You know, people will tell you if you're good at something, just because you're good at something doesn't mean you should do it. That's not true. If you are good at something, you should do it. And by the way, the easier something comes to you, the more likely it is that it is a talent. Who here likes the public speak? Raise your hand up. Stand up if you like the public speak. It's the minority in the room, right? Public speaking, you can sit. Seriously, sit. <laughs> sit down. Uh, uh, people like to, people, uh, public speaking is the greatest fear above death. It is the greatest fear that people have in the world. So if you like to do it, and, you're, and, you, and it comes naturally to you, it is a talent. Who here likes to find a stranger in the room and strike up a conversation? Again, not a lot of people. Who here can get lost in a PowerPoint presentation? Making a PowerPoint presentation perfect to the point where it sings off the screen. Again, the minority in the room. Who here loves Excel and can make Excel spreadsheets really, like, a little weirdo, but. <laughs> and that's the thing, is, is that you have an opportunity to cater right now, at this point in your lives, you have an opportunity to, to intend things. And so right now, you have an opportunity to carve out a, a career for yourself and a pathway for yourself that caters to your strengths and not your weaknesses. That puts you in the line of light and not the line of darkness. And so the way I like to help people figure out their strengths is to give them an exercise that you can do today and do for a while. Um, my name is Evan. 
um, is to take a, 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 a notebook and, and make a journal and divide each page in that journal into two halves. And on the left-hand side, you're going to put an S. And on the right-hand side, you're going to put a W. And over the course of the next month, okay, treat, this, treat each page as a month. Every time you get lost, does anybody have a, a project that they work on, or maybe it's a blog, or a Twitter feed, or, or a, an Instagram page where you can just jump on it, and suddenly you look up and it's three hours later, and you don't know where the time went. That's a temple. That's a strength. So anytime you feel strong, anytime you feel strong, write it down. I. One of my weaknesses, I hate explaining myself. I hate it. Why are you doing that? You know, and it's hard. I don't, like, I'm doing it because I'm right. Shut up. <laughs> Again, I have weaknesses I am aware of. Every time you feel weak, write it down. At the end of a month, at the end of 90 days, at the end of six months, keep looking at this list. And what you'll find is, this is where you should be focusing and this is where you should not be focusing. And you want to build a career for yourself where 75% of your day focuses on your strengths and 25% of your day focuses on your weaknesses. You're never going to not have to pay your taxes. You're never, even if you don't like Excel, not going to have to use Excel. You're never going to not have to do math. Every time I go to a restaurant, I have to do math. Um, freaking waiters. Um, but the key is, if you can drum your weaknesses, if you can make the part of your life that, that focuses on your weaknesses small enough to take into a bathroom and strangle to death, then, then your day-to-day -day career is going to be happy for you. You want most of your day. And by the way, your first job is not going to be this, unless you love getting coffee. You know, unless you love like doing like, well, TPS reports or whatever, whatever it is. You know, there's going to be shit work in your first job. And there's gonna be shit work for the first third of your career. So this ratio is not gonna be where you want it in those first couple of jobs. But this is the goal, 75, 25. Um, if you are good at something, if it comes naturally to you, it is a talent. Don't let anyone convince you otherwise, okay? Second part about being self-aware. So this, this process is really key. You need to, to be focusing on it. And by the way, they don't teach us in college. Your parents won't tell you this. Your, your advisors, your HR department won't tell you this. This is not something that is in a book, a textbook somewhere. Actually, it is. It's in a book called uh, um, First, uh, uh, Now Discover Your Strengths and Strength Finders um, by uh, uh, Marcus Buckingham, really uh, from the Gallup organization. So there is a book to use to, to help figure this out. There's a strength finder exercise. By the way, there's 17 bajillion strength finders exercises. This is just the one I tend to and I get no cut. Um, so that's thing number one. Thing number two is having a really good feedback loop. Having a bunch of people around you, whether it's your parents or your advisors or your friends, who can be honest with you about your strengths and your weaknesses. Who can read your work and proofread it. Somebody earlier today uh, was in the recruiting uh, panel said, I get emails or I get uh, cold submissions that have typos in them or they have the wrong company in them. I just, a gray paper, I have a class at NYU that I teach. I have 75 students in my class. Um, every paper had grammatical errors. Every single paper had grammatical errors. Every single paper. How is that possible with standards? Don't do that. Have a good feedback loop that protects you from your weaknesses and that promotes your strengths. Have people that you meet, a mentor, um, a, a teacher, a friend, uh, a boss, a coworker, someone, a cousin, uh, someone that you can find who's going to be honest with you and frankly have as, more point, as many points of light as you possibly can with regards to that. Um, and, and the more you look in the mirror, um, the, the, the better you're going to wind up looking. You have to be aware of your strengths and your weaknesses and you can't do that on your own. You need people to be honest with you. Um, uh, so then, after you've created those uh, uh, arenas for yourself, um, come up with a plan. Three-month plan, six-month plan, 12-month plan, three-year plan. 
where do you want to be six months from now? If you're not thinking about where you want to be six months from now, six months from now, don't be surprised when you're somewhere that you didn't expect to be, good or bad. But have a plan. Be ready to adjust that plan based on facts on the ground, but put it in place and keep adjusting. Six months from now, I want to have sold two television shows. That's my goal. When I was 30, I said I want to be running a television network by the time I was 40. I was. It took a very circuitous route to get there, but it happened. But if you don't put those things out in front of you, and you're just kind of letting it happen as you want, well then, you know, that's, that's not going to be a good way to predict success. Now, if I said to myself, today I want to be running a television network in four years, that would be a stupid goal because television networks won't exist in four years. <laughs> that's a joke. But really. Um, and then as you put those plans in place, create an action plan to make those plans um, come true. And by the way, don't be afraid of failure. Do not be afraid of failure. You will learn significantly more from failures than you will from successes. Um, there's a motto at Johnson & Johnson, failure is our most important product. Successes are great, they're fun, they're awesome, but you're not necessarily learning a lot about yourself from them. Failures and self-examinations through them are really important. So change your plan based on facts on the ground and based on things that happen to you. I moved too fast. Um, okay, so any questions so far on this? For our entry level people or for recent graduates, what is, um, or people looking to get into, you know, typical media jobs, right? Yes. What is an acceptable goal to have? For that first job? Yeah. I think, what, are you in graduate school or are you in? I just graduated from college, so. Undergrad? Looking for jobs. <coughs> Where'd you go? I went to Florida International University. Um, so I think the, the, the first job in the media business that you should be looking for is one that helps you figure out what you want to do in the media business. Right, but in terms of, you know, you said have a three-month goal, a five-month goal, what could your goal be in an entry-level position? Uh, again, I would say find a job that helps you figure out what part of the media industry okay. that you want to be in. You know, this is a, this is a great segue. Thank you. I didn't plan it. Um, <laughs> knowing what you don't want to do is just as important. Actually, to a certain extent, more important than knowing what you will do. Because if, if, if I were to pull you right now and say, what exactly do you want to do in the media industry? A, given the fact that the media industry is in complete and utter chaos, it's hard to know what the answer to that question is. And secondarily, you haven't had enough experience to know exactly what you want to do. Now, who here wants to be on the creative end of the business? Okay, everybody wants to be on the creative end of the business. And not everybody's going to get to be on the creative end of the business. And not everybody should be on the creative end of the business. Um, but knowing, does anybody here want to be in sales? Great, that's good to know. If you get, if you're not, if you're not sure about that, try sales out or be in a situation where you can experience it. Because knowing that, no, I don't want to be in sales, or no, I don't want to be on the creative end, or no, I don't want to be in finance, or no, I don't want to be in operations. That's good because you can cross that off. And when you're looking for a job. You don't want more areas to look for a job in, you want less. The more focused your search is, the better off you're gonna be. Don't send resumes to everyone. That is a waste of time. If you're blind sending resumes to people you don't know over the internet, and you're not discriminated about how, what part of the industry that you're looking at, you're, don't be surprised six months from now when you don't have a job. That's not how it works. Eliminate areas that you have zero interest in. Do not apply for those jobs because there are, how, uh, who here is between the ages of 20 and 30? Okay. There are more of you on earth than there ever have been humans of your age in any point in human history. There are more of you applying for these jobs than have ever been applied for jobs at any point in any era. You are the largest two generations who have ever walked the face of the earth. So the idea that you're going to send one resume in amongst a thousand other resumes and be the one magical resume that blindly got sent that pops to the top is like, let's go find a unicorn. 
You know, it just doesn't work that way. Most jobs are gotten, first of all, friends of friends, people you know. They're not done, the very few jobs go to strangers. Um, and that's why we, hi we hire who we know. I'm the, the, the chair of the head of food school. And, and one of the jobs is to stick young people of color into the media business so that they can meet people, so that they can get jobs, so that we can have a more diverse and sustainable media industry. So just sending blind resumes to, to someone, especially in an area that you have no interest in, is, is a waste of time for you and, by the way, for the recipient as well. That's a loophole. To be discriminate, find, make connections with people who can actually give you a job, Apply to areas that you actually are interested in, not just any job. Um, and then, because the other thing is, like, let's say you apply to a, an area of the business that you that you aren't interested in, and you get that job. You're then going to spend two years in that job, and at the end of it, what are you going to do with that experience? Get another job you don't want? And then you're going to be in my office ten years from now saying, I'm stuck. That's how it happens. We, 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 we accidentally fall into jobs. Then we accidentally fall into careers, and then we wonder why our careers aren't going anywhere. And that's, it happens, it happens a lot, by the way. Yeah? Um, I guess, like, I get caught in a spiral of, like, thinking too far ahead, thinking, okay, so if I, you know, want to expand my career, I'll go to this other company. Right. Instead of like, so now well, but that's why focusing on your passion and your strengths. You're th there's a th th I'm not just a nice guy who wants you to feel happy. <laughs> it's you will be better at the jobs you're passionate about. You will be better at the jobs where your strengths are. So if you fo focus on those things, you will be good, and then you will be successful, and then you will be promoted. That's how it works. If you're mad about the job. Look, you're hardworking. You seem reasonably intelligent. Um, you're, you will do a good job. Where'd you go to school? Okay. So, um, <laughs> so you must have some. You did well in your SATs. So, uh, so you will do. You will. You'll do well to a point because you're an intelligent person who works really hard. I'm sure you. You have nice teeth. You were raised well, um, so you 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 will get to a certain point because you're a hard worker, and that's how life works. And then you'll run out of gas, and that's what happens because I'm no longer passionate and I'm not focusing on my strengths. So people are passing me who do love this area. So that's why I, I, I avoid that. So um, so I'm going to pivot just a bit and talk about personal branding because how much time do I have left? Can you help me out? Yeah, um, it's eleven. So when does this time? Oh. I have 10 minutes? Holy cow. So, so now I'm going to talk about personal branding. Um, so this is the other key to a long and successful career, and it's also the key to getting those gigs that you want. First of all, clean up your social media. Your personal brand is made when you're not in the room. I don't know, is anybody at the recruiting panel? Did, he, did they talk about social media and cleaning it up? Clean up your social media. No pictures of you getting stoned. No pictures of you getting drunk. No pictures of you in a bathing suit. No pictures of, like, take them off. And if you think recruiters aren't looking at your social media, you're kidding yourself. That's the first place they go. And it's not just LinkedIn. It's Facebook. It's Instagram. It's Twitter. I have a very angry Twitter feed. People know that. But it's also, a, that's, part of who, that's part of who I am. That is, that is a choice I have made. I came here today in a sneaker and t-shirts. That's a choice I made. Everything I do about my personal brand that's out there in the world is on purpose. It is not an accident. I have built a brand that is Evan Shapiro, and good or bad, it's who I am. And by the way, it's consistent across every aspect of my life. Do that. So, when I say clean it up, I mean make it look like you want to look. The flip side of that is don't go take a job that's going to force you to look and act and feel ways that make you feel uncomfortable. People ask me, what should I wear to an interview? Well, obviously, don't wear this. But don't not wear this. Like, if this is what you want to wear to work every day, well, then wear this. 
don't, the, not every employee is right for every culture, and not every culture is right for every employee. So thing number one, um, clean up your social media. Thing number two, create a personal brand for yourself that's gonna project who you wanna be and where you wanna work. So for example, well, who here has a resume? It's good, 100%. Who here used kind of the default template that Google or Word or whoever gave you to make your resume? Who used a template to make their resume? So the rest of you just made it up from whole cloth? Is that how it worked? How did you make your resume? Okay, that's a good start. Um, who here used bullet points that come with kind of documents that... Yeah, who here used like Jared's, like managed it and then it on your resume? Yeah. Your resumes all begin to look alike. They do. And you have to avoid that because when a job opens up for an entry level job, 10 bajillion resumes come through. And the only way for you to pop, it's very difficult to stand out if you spend all of your time fitting in. So there's a really good book called I Am Not a Gadget by Jaron Lanier. Jaron Lanier was the creator of the idea of, uh, um, of uh, artificial intelligence. AI. He created that idea. And then he fell out of love with the internet and has spent the rest of his life fighting against it. And he does these things. He, he has this thing called um, digital lock-ins. Facebook is a digital lock-in. They fool you into thinking that you're so unique and your page is so different from everyone else. It's exactly the same as everyone else. Instagram, LinkedIn, resumes, PowerPoint. These are defaults that the industry have given you. They're trying to force you into a frame. They're trying to force you into a mold. They're trying to make you all look alike. Not from malice, but because it's easier for us. If you all can just go, no. It's much easier for us than if you run off, like the cow in Brooklyn. You want to be that cow in Brooklyn. You want to be noticed. You want to you want to stand out. Not to a place where like there's perfume on your resume, or it's in, you know, you have, GIFs in your resume or things like that, but it should be in whole sentences. I know, strange, unusual, controversial. Whole sentences on your resume. Subject, verb, predicate. I did this thing and it was great. Not managed thing. You want to talk about the jobs that you have. Your resume should be a narrative. It should be a story about who you are. It should tell me why I want to meet you. I like to do this thing where I tell people, write your story in 25 words. Of, does anybody here know what an elevator pitch is? What's an elevator pitch? Elevator. You said you like to public speak, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so an elevator pitch is sort of what you tell someone to ride an elevator. Correct. So you're in an elevator with Jeff Bukas for 11 uh, floors. <laughs> you need that. That should be like in your hip pocket. Not Make it up on the fly, write it down. And by the way, I very much profess it, and then put it at the top of your resume. The more you can say about why you're unique, the, the greatest talent you can have, the greatest talent that all, I, do, I don't know any of you, but I am a per prognosticator. I can read minds. And I can tell you that the greatest talent that you have, and you have, and you have, and you have, is being yourself. No one on earth is as good at that as you. And the sooner you start to put yourself out there, the more chance you have to get the job that's perfect for you. And I'm not talking about a, a kind of fancy mission statement type of thing at the top. I'm talking about this is who I am. 25 words or less. Write that tonight. Write that tonight. Put it at the top of your resume. Put it at the top of your LinkedIn page. Have it in your hip pocket. Have your talking points. When you get a meeting with me, when you get a meeting with Jeff Bukas, when you get a meeting with Dean Braun, when you get a meeting with any of the executives that you're going to see today, when you have a conversation with them later today, you have one chance to make a first impression. It's a cliche because it's true. Know what you're going to say before you get there. Have, have you ever sat across the table at an interview with a really boring human being? Yeah. Be prepared for that. Be the one that makes that conversation fun. Be interesting and be interested. So these are things that you really have to work on. You know, you, you write your pitch and then you rehearse the pitch 
And then you don't have to worry. If you don't. You get way less nervous. You're way more prepared. You're ready to talk. You know, these are things that you have to know about yourself, and you have to put yourself out there. But you can't do it by happenstance. It's not going to happen magically after you sit down in the room. In fact, if anything, if you haven't prepared all this material before you get there, it's very unlikely that you're going to get there. Um, you need to know how to tell your own story. So the way I like to help people build a resume is throw the resume away, write your life story in a narrative, in prose, from top to bottom. I was born, I did, and I got here today. Then, turn it upside down, take out most of it, and turn it into a resume. It's better that it's a narrative story. This is how I got to meet you today. Learning how to tell your own story, it's a Hamilton, who tells your story, you know, that's important, but how you tell your own story is the most important thing that you can have um, in, your, in your repertoire. Give yourself every weapon to get the job um, um, that you want. Get, give yourself every arrow in the quiver so that when you're sitting across from an HR person who is the first of 12 interviews at Google that you're gonna need to have. Like, has anybody here ever applied to Google or Facebook or Twitter or Amazon? It's a six month slog. And the ones who get through are the ones who do this stuff in advance. Um, you want a good example of a resume? Ask people to see their resume. You want a good example of what not to do? Look at my LinkedIn page. But my LinkedIn page, my LinkedIn page, good, bad, and different, you're gonna laugh. You're not gonna forget it. It's me. Don't do what I did, do what you need to do. Um, I'm, I'm going faster because I have a much longer version of this. Um, have a thesis. Have a point of view. Read every day. Read something new every day. Learn, wake up stupid every day and learn something that can, that can add to your thesis. You need to have, everybody who here, again, if you're between 20 and 30, raise your hand. You are the target demographic that everybody, our target demo that everybody in the media industry wants to get. You are the magical, mythical millennials and Gen Zers that the industry doesn't know what the fuck to do with, right? You have the answer. So if you walk in and you sit down and you have a thesis, first of all, it's not gonna be wrong because nobody knows anything, right? And at least you'll have a point of view. You leave the room. The reason I teach at NYU is not because they pay me very well, which they do not. Um, they, it's because I learn from the 70 students I have on a day-to-day -day basis. They make me better at my job because I'm re-educating myself. You have the answers with you be bold. Say something that the person across the desk is going to remember. So, all of this, I, I went way too fast. I, I had plenty more to say. I, mean, I can send you out the workbook. But focus on your strengths. Know your weaknesses, but focus on your strengths. Do not send resumes blindly. Use LinkedIn. You all met me, right? Send me a LinkedIn invite. Ask me for a cup of coffee. Actually, offer to buy me a cup of coffee. <laughs> uh, you laugh, but the ones who say, hey, I'm not looking for a job, I just need some advice, can I buy you a cup of coffee? Those are the meetings that get done. Look through LinkedIn, use it as six degrees of separation. Send resumes to people that you know, because here's another tip, really quickly. Most jobs that get posted for entry level jobs have already been filled long before they've been posted. Most companies, legally have to post a job even if they know who they're gonna hire. So if you're posting, if you're sending a resume to a job that just got posted at the bottom of the HBO website, chances are that job's already been filled by someone's cousin, daughter, niece, nephew, whatever. So the who you know, the personal interaction, and then knowing how to talk about yourself when you get that opportunity, that's, that, those are keys. The happiest person does win because the happy person is productive. Happy person does great work. The meh person does meh work. And that's how that's how the that's how you run out of gas in your career. All right, I'll take a couple quick questions. I know we have. To okay, go. so that's a. What do you do when you have reached a point where you just feel cynical, defeated, and where do I go from you? You're asking for a friend, right? <laughs> um, the uh, the. <laughs> 
the, the key. Let's go. Uh, the key. The key. You leave. You leave. I mean, you, you have to have a plan for yourself. The higher, the longer you get in your career, every every year you've been in business, add a month to your search. So if you've not been in business, if you if you tomorrow go through LinkedIn and set out a six degrees of separation and you say, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee every week for the next three months, you'll have a job at the end of, the end of those next three months. Those of us who have been in the business a little bit longer, I've been in business 28 years, right? That's, I need 28 months to prep for my next job. Have you ever been to a point where you didn't want to have another cup of coffee? Me personally with yeah. someone who's asking? No. No, I'll, no. With you, or like well, then, you know, yeah, absolutely. There are days where I feel that way, but you, you also have to be in a situation where you have to make choices in life. You either want to get that next game that fulfills you, or you don't. Okay. Depends on what you want to do. If you want to be in the creative end, or you want to be in marketing, or you want to be in that area, then yes. If you want to be in finance, you want to be in areas of the business that's kind of operational and, and you're not kind of a forward-facing, customer-facing, sales-oriented person, then no. In fact, I would say having no social media preference uh, uh, profile in those cases is probably better than not because those tend to be very conservative, like business affairs, finance, operations, these are very conservative ends of the business. They don't want somebody who's posting on Twitter every 25 minutes. You know, so it really depends on what you want to do. If you want to be marketing, creative, that kind of stuff, well then no, yeah, you need a social media presence. But it again, it can be incredibly curious. I'll take one more question. One more. Yeah. Um, when you have someone sitting across from you, would you rather them be honest or try to sort of finish it out? It depends, are you talking about my hair? <laughs> no, I mean, it's like... Then I want you to be, I want you to tell me whatever makes me feel pretty. Yeah, exactly. But I'm saying, like, if you're in an interview and they ask you a question, like, oh, do you know how to do this? So, what's this love or... Yeah, don't ever lie. Yeah. Okay. Don't, you just said it, too. Don't ever lie. Because you will be caught as the media industry is demonstrating right now. So, um, but, fake it till you make it, you know, no, I don't know that, but I am a very fast learner, and I follow a lot of uh, I hope this was valuable. Like I said, we have a workbook. We can email it to you. Be happy to, and I'm here the whole rest of the day. So uh, Is it, it's a good. Sounds good to great, or do we? Uh, strengths finder. Uh, go discover your strengths. I'm not a gadget. First ninety days. Mavericks at work. Startup podcast. Reply all. Um, and then the woman who was just up on stage, what's her name again? Uh, who did the, go oh, talk to her. She's a freaking she, she All right, I'll send her an email because she's a genius. All right, thank you very much.